and start the stream. And hello, good evening, and welcome to our second episode now. I know we made it to week two. Who'd have thought it? Our second episode of what I am going to call Quiz of the Day. Obviously, title pending a lawsuit from the BBC. Uh, I am your host, as always, Sean Cairns, and I will let my other guests this evening introduce themselves. Starting with Shanine, would you like to? Oh, hello. Uh, I'm Shanine. Uh, I don't know what I do. I write some quizzes sometimes. I play quizzes. That's my role in life. <laughs> what a perfect segue into <laughs> Dara. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm Dara. I do science most of the time. And then for a few weeks a year, I get paid to answer questions on TV. It's great. Best gig ever. <laughs> well, I will have you answer this question now. This is what I like to call the question with no wrong answer. It's just whatever mm. you are feeling right now. So last week I asked about sandwich fillings. This week I am going to ask you, what is your favorite drink ever? This could be a very specific pint you had in a pub 10 years ago, or it could just be something as generic as orange juice. For me, for me, nothing beats a nice sparkling water. People might think I'm crazy, but a cold sparkling water just, just hits. Dara? Hmm. Well, the, the drink I drink most of the time is tea. I don't understand all of you people who are addicted to coffee and pretend that it's not an addiction. Um, but uh, no, I, I, I love tea. But if I was going to go for uh, my favourite ever drink, it's probably a cocktail, like a mojito or something on all of this. I do like cocktails. Yeah, I'm also pro cocktails. Um, but I uh, I like lilts. I get them in pallets. Pallets of lilt. <laughs> pallets of lilt, like I'm running a corner shop. <laughs> and I get them yeah, delivered. but you're running a corner shop in the 1980s. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even so know they, they still did Lil. So they still yeah. do Lil. And it's like this kind of, yeah, it, it sums up me. It's sort of faux Caribbean drink, and I'm faux Caribbean. So that's why that pro Lilt. Yeah. I, I don't even want to discuss this week's quiz. I just want to sit and talk about Lilt. <laughs> I can other... send you, I can send you a referral link to get pallets of Lilt and other Coca Cola <laughs> products. Everyone who's watching, that'll get me your extra five pound credit. If you get if you get a full house in next week's quiz, Shanine will send you. <laughs> yeah. So what we need to do is come up with a lilt cocktail, and we're done with, with some soda water. This is it. Yeah, it's this fuck. Yeah, that's what we need. Vodka. Add vodka to everything. It's fine. Oh, it's Caribbean. You got to do rum. Oh, you got to do rum. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, God. <laughs> So I will first of all ask you, how did you find this week's quiz? Were you were you playing? How did you find it? Yeah, I was playing. I did quite well, though I did have a wonderful moment where I counted on my fingers and got it wrong. So I gave the wrong answer. <laughs> I think um... I know the question you're on about, but we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, but no, it was fine. No, I, I quite liked it. Um, it was it was a good mix of questions, uh, randomly weird stuff enough very easy things enough challenging things i thought it was good yeah same i did all right i think <laughs> i mean our, our team run which is the most important thing um and i got 12 4 which is you know it's all, all right. right um i thought the um entertainment is, is it tv film i don't know what okay i'll call it i thought that was very good actually um in terms of a very specific subject i mean i don't think there was anything where i was like oh god um oh, what is this like there was always oh, things no, that no. i was like <laughs> I, I, the, the well, actually, stupidly, the stupidly obscure uh, music question was yes. Oh god, yeah, mega no, mega difficult. I don't was... think anybody's going to get both of them right. I don't think there'll be a single uh, team that gets both of them. No, right. and that was sort or of like really my good. era of music, and I just thought I've not heard of these. And, yeah. and I consider I don't consider myself like the top music quizzer, but I can get through a music oh, yeah, question, a... and that was that was level four plus. The, the girl, the girl <laughs> groups. Yes. yes, the, the, two. the yeah. girl groups who've had one like top sixty hit or something. And... <laughs> yeah, um, and it's just and it's I I sort of quite like questions like that because even though in the first half people know it's something they've never heard of and it's really hard, they still then in the second half guess things that they have heard of and they're not that hard. It's just like I, I mean sometimes it is that unbalanced, but on this occasion it was like 
no, there's going to be something that none of us have ever heard of that we do not know because the first one went for an X. And if we suddenly get the second one, then it will be a miracle. But I think I think that's where I think that's where people obviously yourself and Dara have quizzed for ages. You guys know a lot about the actual mechanics of what it takes to make a good quiz. That's where I think it helps sometimes myself included i know that if the first half of a pair is completely obscure and out there the second half is also likely to be something a bit obscure but you know some people just take i'm a person who'll never pass i'll say anything <laughs> instead of passing yeah. oh I, I i unless i'm really 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 backed into a corner and i have to say something i will never say pass Really, I like. I find it. It's it's better to say a stupid wrong answer than to say pass. And I'm very good at giving a stupid wrong answer. So I mean, I you saw you saw me think Exeter was just outside of London. Yeah, that was. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So, yeah, it is. It is. No, you are correct. Maybe a is. couple of hours. It's only a few <laughs> hours. <laughs> I, I lived in Canada for three years, and on Canadian scale, it's practically in the summer. <laughs> I, oh, I met someone whose dad used to commute to work four hours each way. <laughs> oh my gosh. No. That's like one of the ones you see man flies from Spain to London because it's cheaper than <laughs> yeah. in London. Yeah. No. Oh, um, yes, but I think I want to go through some of these questions tonight because there was, like we're saying, there was a few nice ones. I think when you start off a quiz, it can really kind of tell the way it's going and i think starting off a quiz with which premium cookware brand really laid the foundations of what this week was going to be and just a mash of everything because i think yeah. so there was some sort of semi-relief with that one if anyone plays learned league <laughs> it was a learned league question about two or three days ago and that's why every sort of people in the room who had been playing learned league were like yeah this is exactly how it was worded Mm. And this is why either I knew it at the time and I'm fine, or I didn't know it, and now it's come up and now it's fine. So that's that's my other tip in quiz, which is if you just play enough, the same questions just come up all the time. There's <laughs> so, only so much trivia. They can so much, yeah. And then also, I find because there's a lot of things that, especially because I, so I come from a very quiz bowl background in university, mm. the style of quizzing, and you know there's a canon to that there's a canon to what you have to learn just certain books certain mm. classical pieces things like that and i feel like in normal quiz as well you'll see a lot of the same things start to creep its head up time and time again so like um, a hallway head and anglesey i feel like i've seen that maybe about four or five times in the last 10 quizzes i've played yeah it's oh look you know the the lists that you that you learn. If you learn certain lists, like if you know the periodic table and the reigns and wives and husbands of the kings and queens of England, that blows two alone, and maybe the Booker Prize. There you go. That's that's going to get you to like twenty points or thirty points a season because yeah. they always come up. And this is the thing: people say, "Oh, they're not come up with original questions." I have a lot of sympathy for question setters because it has to it can't be general knowledge if it's not generally known and there's a limited amount of that that's actually a very a relatively small pool of information i know it's a lot of stuff but it's a relatively small pool of information mm -hmm. so you're trying to set the the level one and level two the sort of easy and medium questions there's really little you can set that on so of course it's going to come up again, and again. It has to. but then i think we also see we also see them try and word questions sort of slightly different to try and catch people out almost not that that's a, a bad thing obviously you want to try and set those pitfalls for people um i think something that i'm seem to do you know they asked about they asked about twin peaks but didn't mention david lynch in it yeah. mm. or something like that didn't mention you know the specific northwest i always forget is it seattle it's there or washington state sort of Twin Washington Peaks. State, yeah. yeah Washington <laughs> State yeah so you know they asked about Twin Peaks but in a way that not many people know are know is Twin Peaks because if I was to think of it the first two things I'd think of are okay David Lynch and Washington yeah. well there's also the level of information so like it's a good thing a lot of the time because it gives you a, a route into the question if you don't know mm. it straight off but sometimes it turns from being a very, very challenging question into a ridiculously simple one because, you know, the last four words of the question come in. Like there was this question today on 
famous people from countries. And the yes. first people in it, if it was just given as the first people in it, they were impossible. Mm. They were so, so hard. But then they then list basically the most famous people from those countries and it becomes a level one question. So you can very easily trim that question down and go, who is, what was it, Father Martin or Father something? Damien. Father Damien. Father Damien <laughs> was from which country? And the answer is Belgium, but Damien is not a classic Belgian. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you'd be thinking Ireland, Scotland, Wales, yeah. maybe Australia or something, and and that'll be it, you know. So yeah, it, yeah, they can very easily make them much more talented. What I love, mm. what I love though, I know I'm gonna have to go, and it makes me want to learn. I now want to know about Father Damien. If if this man was looking yeah, what did he do? The best ever <laughs> Belgian, you know. Well, of the... Yeah, no. So this this is the guy, wasn't it? Who was the missionary in in Africa, isn't it? Oh, that sounds problematic now in hindsight. If they're going, the, the man who did colonization is the oh. best ever Belgian. But I mean, they've already got a problematic history with that anyway. So. Or, it, or it might have been actually, it might have been Polynesia or something. But yeah, he was a missionary around the world and stuff. So oh. he's like really well renowned. Because let, let's be honest, the, you know, the, the Belgian colonization thing is kind of glossed over a bit but that was it's yeah let's not talk about it (laughs) yeah yeah. the the fact that he's ahead of you know all of the sporting heroes from belgium is weird Mm. and and this is a good this is a great thing especially if you do any of the international challenges whatever about this one which tends to be more uk focused if you do the international quizzes you get stuff like this and they don't give you that extra information but a belgian would go of course we know who father dame is he's the most famous person ever yeah, it's weird. The best, the I was about to yeah. say the best Canadian, and I don't know why the best <laughs> Belgian ever. Best, the best Belgian, like you know, you've got Eddie Merckx and you know Hergé and stuff. You think uh, Magritte, you know, you're thinking these are the ones that they'll pick. But yeah, no. and then yeah. Oh. I I do think that difficulty of right as someone who writes for various things, and sometimes I get paid and sometimes I don't. Um, are that difference between level two and level three I find those really difficult because level four you can just go insane and really working out what level four means is just what, hard. What it's is, just hard what is my level, <laughs> what is, yeah. level four is just hard it's just hard yeah. you try and make it kind of not as hard as something else you could ask hmm. but it's all relative whereas that middle ground that's where you get a lot of those we're going to ask something really hard initially and actually we need to throw in another clue and it's that kind of so the the oq levels of, as far as i'm aware are uh level 1.5 to level 3.5 so i'm thinking of another i, I play for quiz league of london which do, does level one to level four which is slightly clearer to do because level 1.5 is basically a level two um which well, is really I, hard to write suggesting that the easy questions in this are not as easy as they could be Yes, <laughs> I'm going to say it because as someone has said, we, I mean, I write for QSA similar levels. We call them levels one to four, mm. but it is 1.5 to 3.5. So the level fours, as they would be in other quiz leagues, shouldn't be as hard. I, I will let you discuss whether they are. But the level one point, the level ones here are not really meant to be level ones. But, so I, I think, so I, I'll take, I'll look at an example. So a level, what I would say would be... Ch- you know, copy and paste level one sports pair from tonight's quiz. Yeah, was where is where is the World Cup being held, and who are the current defenders of the World Cup? I would say that. You know, obviously, I'm just speaking for myself as someone. There might be other people who don't yeah. know that, but I agree. The, the, host nation, the host nation, especially, actually, the the champions, the team, or the other team got that in our game, and they didn't get it. Um, but. The, the host nation's in the news because it's so controversial mm. and the people are boycotting and there's all sorts of things. So that's not even just like it was picked a few years ago and I forget because it's in December. Mm. That's like major front page news pretty much constantly. Th- it, would be, it would be different if it's asking who's hosting 2026. Yes. You know, because yes. that's a bit further away. And but it's hard because not many people know. <laughs> that, that's the joint one in North America. Yeah, 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 like yeah. Canada, America and, yeah. and Mexico. Which is bananas. So that's gonna yeah. have it's gonna have I think three and a half thousand miles or four and a half thousand miles between. Oh, it's just uh, yeah. Just imagine being camped somewhere and you're like, well, this is your base and you have to stay here <laughs> because ca- like we can't of, move you. You're camped. Because that was the weirdest. That was the weirdest thing I found about North American sports in general when I lived there. This is the weird thing is that there's no away fans. That doesn't happen. Mm. 
really rare. Yeah, you can't the, come to Toronto. The other cities are too bloody yeah. far away. So, you know, like I, I went to a, an ice hockey game in Montreal, which is madness. And it's like 25,000 people and it's all for the home team. There's no away support. So when the away team scores, it's like dead silent. <laughs> Oh, it's, really <laughs> That's yeah, it's really really strange and there's no back and forth or any of that kind of stuff because mm-hmm. the nearest team to them is in the nhl is probably toronto which is you know it's a it's a six yeah. hour drive no one's going to do that so they just don't bother yeah so imagine what it's going to be like you know if you're in the world cup and you're in new york for one of them and then you have to go to like guadalajara for the second one <laughs> and you qualify for the semi-finals <laughs> in vancouver like what what's <laughs> oh yeah uh, oh gosh. anyway yeah so we're meant to be talking about quiz <laughs> yes no i would i would say uh, objectively i agree i think that is a level one i think most people uh, the, the level one how i define it when i'm writing when i'm thinking about levels is the person who doesn't quiz does they do they know it <laughs> That's a level one. And it's quite easy in my circles now to have like my quizzer friends who have their chestnuts, mm-hmm. which are not the same chestnuts. People wouldn't even use the word chestnuts in your friends that you go to the pub quiz with. They were not quizzes. They just come, they just come for the drink and to spend time with you. That that's that's your level one. It does sometimes, I think, cross that level. There's sometimes not so much in OQA UK, um, UK, but in other competitions where I go, what is what was my level one this week? Because <laughs> I genuinely, I got through it, but I don't know what that is. And I plead to, to OQL in Mike Olson's wonderful stats. Mike Olson is the most amazing man and I love him dearly. Um, to tell him when he's doing his stats, what the levels are, because there are times where like last week when John revealed what the levels were for seat 2A and operation or something was level two and British quizzes just went, what? Because international quizzes, maybe not. Mm-hmm. Sorry, not level, sorry, not operation. Guess who was level two? Yeah. And and thus operation in the pair was, was level two. And I just go, really? Because that to me is the sort of that's my sport and games. That's what I can get through. Don't don't ask me about actual sport where people need talent. Ask think, me about board games. I think, please. I, I think I suppose if I you know, if there if there was a very if there was a very hard level four, even something to me, so if it was something on like horror films, which I consider my bread and butter absolutely anything i suppose if there is something someone considers a level four and i know right away i'm not going to think it's that hard i suppose no, i'm not no, going to i think. had yeah i had that it's i just think the yeah. black exploitation pair possibly today was level yeah. four oh that was tough yeah so yeah. but like th- this is the eternal thing it's it is the cliche it's easy if you know them mm-hmm. so i think i think when you're talking about levels you have to think for a level one, 75% of people will get this without even thinking. Mm. They'll just go, you won't even start the timer. They will just fire out the answer. That's a level one. And then the other 25%, most of them will get it if they think for like a few seconds. It has to be that easy. Yeah. And it has to be that generic and that widespread. Anything above that, you know, it's it's hard. And if you need specific knowledge, you need, you need to have watched the movie or if you have to be into that band or you have to be into that sport, yeah. then it's just not anymore. No, That's no, it, and, and it and does. People, yeah. You'll always get it where someone goes, "Oh, I always thought that one was easy," or "I knew the other half of the pair," because sometimes you just know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think because I write a lot of questions. So, okay, two reasons. So, I got the black exploitation pair. Uh, big Curtis Mayfield fan, mm. big Pam Greer fan. That's that's fine for me. I can totally get that it, it is tough because like I can't think of it ever being on television. It, it's those sorts of how accessible are answers yeah. as well. I, I think um, that one. That one might have been a bit easier because I think Superfly had a remake a few years ago. Superfly was a was a much um, more accessible so, yeah. than um, yes, yeah, because of the coffee. song. Yeah, yeah, the the song and soundtrack. And I think, like I said, I think for people at least my sort of age, because we got that it was passed over to us and we got it because Superfly did have a remake a few years ago. I'm fairly certain of it. And I can't remember yeah. who was in it. it. Doesn't matter, but like that sort of thing as well. But Coffee was just you know, out and gone like I graduated with a film degree and I've never heard of <laughs> coffee. You know? I've I've heard of the other one that was in the question, Foxy Brown. Yeah, yeah. Foxy yeah. Brown. I was looking at a poster of Foxy Brown as that question was being read because I was in my our bedroom and we have it above our television. 
um because I'm a huge Pam Grier fan and um I was like oh great I could like look at this and see it and the moment they said Foxy Brown in the Crescent I was like oh that's the other one and that's that's the kind of level of knowledge but also you know again I can't think of many occasions where that has kind of really come up before and that's what makes things I think sometimes level one so like um gold coming up twice in similar ways in both the main and the friendly like you can't even, even if you're as terrible at science as I am you know AU is gold now because it just comes up it is seen as the the science chestnut the chemistry yeah. chestnut there are people on the street who wouldn't know that you know I know people who've got um chemist sorry what's the word I'm looking for chemical engineering degrees who struggle with their periodic table so it's it's finding that balance of and I think OQR does it quite well of what do people know in division one and what do people know in division seven and, and that, that's that's the other problem with setting questions for this league like I know you don't have a free guess in division one which makes it a bit more challenging mm. but if you make it so it's a complete stroll and they all get like seven out of eight right or six out of eight right in division one you've set the quiz wrong so but if you make it so that people in the lower divisions are all getting ones and twos right and they're going to have a terrible time you've also set the quiz wrong yeah so that's that is not any that's a tightrope to walk yeah. you know like the if you look at like the you know the quiz machine guys they're, they're going to get most of them right they're just going to smash them and there's not a lot you can do about that but i think really you have to set it for the bottom six divisions not for the top division yeah i think um, mm. so i think that kind of segues us nicely now into looking at some of our results from mm. this night and some of the big oh, games yeah i think i th- so i think i said last week one of the biggest games the big game coming into this week would be lovecraft in the time of cholera versus motley crew mm-hmm. obviously because that is playing for second place right now and i think it was if motley crew win it they go joint with quiz machine if quiz yeah. machine lost their game so motley crew actually beat lovecraft 49 48 so that was a very 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 close yeah. game there and, and um, pat, pat gibson yeah. a full house pat gibson of course he needs no introduction <laughs> <laughs> that's a great score that oh i'm looking at the scores in that game i wish i it is with no free guess that. that's a brilliant score yeah. 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 I. I've never. The closest I've come is getting seven of my own in like a friendly somewhere. <laughs> like nowhere near I, I, yeah, an eight. I got. I got seven. I got seven a few weeks ago, but that was also because a, a couple of them were very lucky guesses that <laughs> without a free guess, I never would have gone for. Yeah, I, yeah. I did. Th- I did two really stupid things today, and sh- I should have got a seven. I ended up with a five, but I did just oh, two really, really bad mistakes. <laughs> Luckily, luckily, our team were way ahead, so it didn't make a difference. But yeah, oh, I so I was saying, um, like I said, I was saying this earlier. I clipped the post so many times. We ended up drawing, but if I just got one of them, we would have won. And it makes you feel sometimes you feel a bit. I mean, we're not playing for anything in our league right now. <laughs> Promotions out of our hands. We're fairly safe from relegation. We're like we're like we're like uh, Southampton in the middle of a season. You know, we're just playing for fun. <laughs> we're just going out there kicking a ball around for fun. It's getting just the routine of coming up on a, turning up on a Wednesday and playing. Yeah, it's um yeah it is. I was saying I had a few weeks ago. I was just getting the wrong syllables of everything, <laughs> and it was awful because it was like oh there is some knowledge there, but it's not quite coming to the front of my brain or at least out of my mouth so Mm. yeah I'm just looking at the scores in general which I hadn't done before and actually I think I don't think hopefully anyone had a really horrible game I mean I think the plus with Mm. free guess and it's now been brought into OQL USA across all divisions oh sorry not across all divisions but from two to to four Mm. is you don't see the zero zeros anymore and the zero zero is really depressing. Like I get, I've as someone who has had a zero zero in OKR USA. Like you just don't want to see that, and you certainly don't want to see that in free guess. And I think that's a good indicator that things are going okay. So even if people are just getting their two level ones, good because they should be getting their two level ones. If they don't get anything else, then it's obviously not in their wheelhouse and it's not their week. And I always say, you know, an eleven week season, you're going to have a week that is amazing, and you're going to have a week that is absolutely horrible, and everything else should kind of fit in between that, depending on how many games you play. So hopefully that is kind of is what is happening for 
a lot of people. But yeah, I think, I don't know, so I haven't seen any comments on it. I think OQL is getting tougher, but I think it needs to get tougher to one, meet the requirements of people who are one, doing so much quizzing and two, who just want to learn more stuff as well. You know, I, I have a debate about whether actually you learn that much quizzing, but you do, if you see the same questions all the time or hear the same questions all the time, I should say, then it does help. And you probably need to do a lot to kind of really get those points and, and to find, and my friend described it as eating your greens really on, you know, those subjects where you just don't really know anything. You really want to be at a point where if your level one science comes to you, you can get it, even though you're not a science person. And I think, I hope OQL do that quite well. Um, but I haven't, I've, admittedly, I'm still scrolling down. So I haven't gone down to the uh, lower division. So I hope they still had a nice time because we there did, is some stuff. We did have a lovely okay. time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm in 4A and, you know, we come out and the amount of, you know, when you get an X and you're just like, somebody somewhere knows this. I know that, mm. but we don't. And that's always a bit of a shock to the system. Just like I've heard someone knew coffee. That was, you know. <laughs> be obsessed with Pam Greer. That's my advice to people if they want to get good at quiz. So I think in the in the top division, this week's games really kind of spread things out a bit because mm. it was quite tight going into this week with the games and the people who the people who needed so the people who needed to win won their games and the people who who didn't need to lose lost <laughs> their games essentially. So it's kind of set up quite an interesting thing. And I'm looking at the score. I'm looking at the score right now. And, you know, a team who have been Division 1 since, I think, I think the first season, but have always kind of just b- been missing that relegation. I know they, I hope they won't mind me saying this. They've always been in that relegation fight and kind of pulling it out in the last se- in the last day. You know, compulsory mantis shrimp, shrimp sitting in the dizzying heights of fourth place in their division right now you know it's like seeing sam rider at eurovision come second the dizzying <laughs> the nosebleeds of fourth place it is and like if, if you like i'm just i've put up the standings here their points four is the second lowest in the division yeah they've, they're on a plus minus of minus three you know they're actually yeah. and that and that just i think it shows that it can come down to one or two questions so often mm. And this, the amount of times I've gone into a fight, not even a final round, a final pair, just absolutely sweating and not. Oh, yeah. I, I refuse to sit in seat four often I, because of that reason. I, I always sit in seat four. <laughs> Did you love it? Do you love the excitement of it might be No, I don't care. Then... You don't care. That's what, yeah. that's what well, Dar- the approach I need to take. Dar- just... Dar- 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 I'm stopped, here. Dara's Dar- stopping. <laughs> A barmaid in Chichester winning thirty grand <laughs> half the time. You know, it's not. Yeah. It's so, not and it's, it's seriously, the, the skill is transferable. I don't care, and it's the same on like on the on the chase. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. It's not. It's not my money on the chase, and <laughs> I, I don't get nervous. I don't get stage fright. So I just go. Do you think it would? Do you think it would add to the height if you had to pair? If they were like, the we're, we're going to affect oh. your salary. Yeah. If it was my actual cash up, I then no way. I would. I, I gave up gambling a long time ago. But like, yeah, like I went out with like one of, one of the first shows I did. Um the offer was like a six figure number and I was like I was going oh all right and I went out and I I won but I came back and I said to the you know the juice that was a lot of money going out and it's like oh yeah yeah that's fine we you know we had every faith and I went yeah yeah. we had had every faith (laughs) and it's the same with this like everyone's going oh you know it comes down to because it's come down to me maybe five or six times where Mm. I need to get that question right it doesn't happen right a lot. Around. Yeah, I think I it's for me. It's like, oh god, if it comes down to like this question could win it. But actually, the amount of times that has actually happened has been very few. Either because oh. like I'm losing very heavily, or it's just not that close, and we're oh. fine. So it's weird that I've kind of psychologically, I'm like, oh, you know, the the person in four is the one who gets their question. It's like there was one. The one today was that horrible. St- was it ocean current yes, question? The South African. I mean, if that I knew, was close, I knew that dead. That I see that was no problem because <laughs> it's it's like it's one of the one of the classic um, things that everybody thinks is right, but isn't. Is what's the southernmost point of Africa? If you ask that, oh, in yeah. quiz, 
99% of, of teams will very confidently say it's the Cape of Good Hope and it isn't mm-hmm. and it never has been and everybody puts it down anyway they always do and the the real point is that Cape Agulhas and the, it's named and the current is the same the current is named after the Cape and it's just one of those things that I, I know off the top of my head. Also, my mother's a geography teacher, so I have a lot of this. Oh, that's, there we go. I, again, I, think, <laughs> I think that leads, I think what you're saying there leads us into a couple of things I want to say just finally before we wrap up, because it's getting late for some people, um, which is this idea, because it came up a few times in this quiz, and that idea of a question wanting you to say the wrong thing, almost baiting you into saying the wrong thing. And I think some of us are smart enough now to kind of see those tricks and start to avoid them but then once in a while I will walk right into a pole and just <laughs> bang my head on the answer they want me to give and it's not that answer at all you know so something like that like it was the southernmost point in Africa mm. I think, is this the gulf of good hope or something like that you know yeah you yeah. know what I mean, you think the answer is yeah but I think my question is then is there anything you think you could say in how to spot questions like that or how to really keep an eye out and go is this question baiting me to say something it depends on the format yeah on this format it's different because you've got quite a bit of time Hmm. on a speed quiz they do it on purpose Mm -hmm. so if you need to buzz in an answer half the time you're not even listening to the whole question you listen you hear one key word and you go i know what this is going to be yeah, you know, so yeah. and you, you slam on and you try to get in ahead of everybody else. So with this with this kind of format, you just actually have to sit and think about the question, mm. even if it seems yeah. obvious. Take the two or three seconds to go to process it in your mind what they're actually asking for, and then fire it out. Yeah. yeah, I don't think any writer. I mean, I certainly don't. I've written things that I kind of probably could have been a bit less ambiguous. So in my day job, I write exam questions for animal management. I'm constantly saying to um, like lecturers who write the actual questions, like, "Is this clear? Is this? Are we going to go down other routes and Sh- things like that?" So swing a cat around. Yes. <laughs> no, that's an animal welfare issue. Do not swing cats. I've, I've, um, in this in this format, the worst ones are where there's say three possible options mm. yeah uh, they're the worst ones where it's like prime what primary color and it's a really hard question or something like that so you have a reasonable chance of ruling out all of the major possibilities and handing a point to the we're, other team we're essentially monty hauling yeah. quiz in that <laughs> way which i think um, so, yeah. so that, they're the worst ones it's like where you know you're saying Oh, I don't know which politician or which prime minister of the 1990s or two or the 2000s, well, and you're like, okay, there's like three of three, them here, think, four of them. Yeah, and yeah. they're the worst ones. I think, oh, I think it's, it's well. There was the one. There was the one today about um, a Thatcher's the cabinet. And someone for me, obviously, yeah. obviously, being the generation younger, I was. I don't want to say when I was born. <clears throat> 19, <laughs> I was born in 99. Boo. <laughs> I started my undergrad in 99. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, fine. I'll yeah. just, it's fine. I'll just take 40 grand off of Dara. And <laughs> yeah. It's fine. And then I'll be forgiven. Um, and, you know, it is I, those like weird, like I'm guessing that comes under history. And I was very frustrated by that one because all I could remember was he was the one with the ice cream hair and spitting image, which is my age group, which I was probably too young to age. But that was literally what I had in my head. I was like, I can't remember his name, but he had the ice cream hair. I'm not even sure if that was him, but that was that was what I had in my head. And yeah, there is a lot of that kind of, I, as someone, not even, I'm youngish for quiz, but I kind of have to go, no, you have to be kind of like, that whole before my time, after my time, you just have to be constantly through time. Yeah. You have to know everything. I think, it's I think awful. it doesn't it doesn't help that I that we have but, such a young team kind of in terms of our age. Yeah. yeah. Like there's there's limits to that. Like one of the questions today was about diets, and I got the one about is it F plan? Yes. Yeah, yes plan, yeah. I I knew that exists. I knew it did, but you know, I couldn't think of it because it came out when I was literally, you know not on solid food yet you know and it's just it's not the kind of thing that's culturally re- relevant enough mm. to mm. stick around that's the thing so if you live through it everybody will know it but if you didn't I, like i do this for a living and i didn't know it. so you know it's not a hard question 
if you're over a certain age. Yeah, <laughs> and that's that's it. There's, and that, that's yeah. the thing. Some we talk about levels. Some things are like that's a that's a level two or a level three question for me, and it's an absolute tap in for anyone in their sixties. Hmm. I um, yeah. so one one thing I want to mention because there was a couple of questions about it. Date was a pair, and that is the idea of mnemonics helping you learn things. Mm-hmm. Quite so obviously we had calf today to help you remember yeah. the major horse races I I like I've complete, not heard of that one I, yeah I've never heard of it either and I was and, and I and as soon as it said you know letter C okay I'm thinking is this Cheltenham Cheltenham and then it said Wales and like a complete idiot I said Chet Stum and not Chip Stow. oh no like a complete idiot <laughs> knocked it off the crossbar but um you know so I think the idea is is there any kind of little mnemonics not major ones like you know, Richard of York gave battle in vain for your colours of the rainbow and that. What are some of your favourite ones to help you remember quite obscure or harder things? I don't know if it's that obscure, but I got told from recently by my friend and um, some of friendly league teammate Sam Smith, which is the big V for the mother sources. So ignore the I and G in big. <laughs> And then you go tomato, holidays, a span or whatever it is, uh, Betchmall, and then Veluto, Velute, the velvety one. And that's how you remember the five sources, apparently. It go. needs work. Ignore the ING. <laughs> then you still you still have to remember the you still have to learn the five sources Sh- as well. So going that to make two French mother sauces that begin with I and G. I know, yeah, there's like new ones that I've created in my kitchen to make it work. <laughs> But like, yeah, that I had to be fair as much as like in our little group where my another friend told his friends about it and they were like, it needs work and it does need work. But it it does. Once you kind of know there's only about five things to learn, you kind of keep that in your head. You can you can go for it. I'm trying and I bet Dara knows it. The um, the electromagnetic in order. So the, the wave. So like radio. Um, radio ga- gamma. X. No, no, gamma is the other. There the is a, yeah, there is like a new. Yeah. <laughs> Screw it, I'm done. I There's like a it. mnemonic for it that I've been trying to learn and failed because there's like seven of them and that's too much for me. So, yeah, I I would know them, but only because I lived, I work with my cross. You are science. I, I I know the one. I, I don't know the like dangerous radiation ones. I know from UV up to infrared. That's it. Because I, I use them, but I know them in color order and stuff and what wavelengths uh, yeah. we do it more. No, the, the one I do, I have I've a load of these, tons of them. So uh, many great astronaut stargaze is the manned space missions. Oh, so nice. Mercury, Gemini, Apollo and Skylab were the manned space, the NASA manned oh. space missions. Um, the silly moose tries to escape is the layers of the atmosphere. <laughs> Troposphere, oh, <laughs> mesosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere. Um, yeah, the the current the current speaker of the House of Commons is actually Lindsay Doyle, which I think is hilarious and makes it really easy to remember because his name is Lindsay Doyle. Um, that kind of thing. I, I I just have tons of these. It's the best way to remember random facts. I, I, I you've said some of these, and I'm like, oh yeah, because I've just been trying to learn them straight or trying to take a pun, oh. at them. If it, especially if it's a longer list. Anything over like really long thing, and it's and if it's not something that comes up all the time, you need to have something to mm. to click it together. Just as it's well, I do certainly. I I don't have the kind of mind who can just memorize a list randomly. I have to no. either yeah. a story yeah. about it or link other bits of information to it. Yeah, I I think just very quickly for certain types of quiz list learning is the best way to go i know like when we did university challenge you were just told list list learn all your years of nobel prize winners and that and that's not something i do that's not i'm not a list no god no it's i write questions for those people because i know someone will get them they are not for me i'm not writing them because i know them i will you know your pulitzer prize your nobel prize someone somewhere has learned the list I try and give extra clues. I try and point people. Actually, you know what? The lists are quite interesting, but don't learn them from beginning to end. Yeah, I, I've, just, le- oh. <laughs> I've learned a few of them, like just because some of them are impossible to learn. I had to learn the the reigns of the kings and queens of England. It comes up all the time. Mm. It's really hard to build anything around that. I am. So I've just learned that. I I, Spork, uh, Sporkle was my friend there. Um, <laughs> got them, got them from William the Conqueror onwards. But before that, yeah. with the Saxon king, you don't, you don't need to. No one ever asks. 
They never no, once, they don't. once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon, yeah. they get a sign. They're not. They're not worth the effort. And that, that's the other thing. If you are going to do this seriously, you have to prioritize what's important. And mm-hmm. some things come up all the time. Like we said, you have to learn those. Don't bother learning. You know the third largest cities and countries because they literally never come up. The first and the second one, or the capital and the biggest, if that's the case. That's that definitely. Yeah. Nothing. And at the end of the day, it's a team game. And I think you have to have a team that is composed of people who have their bread and butter and they know their stuff in that subject. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the the people I work best with are people that in day to day, I would not meet and I would probably not get on. (laughs) Because I'm just like, we're completely different people. Like, I like my music and my entertainment and my trash. Mm -hmm. And they like, you know, battles and canals and all those kind of things. So that's, to me, a good team. You know, it's about actually, do you know what? I'm going to, like, there was a, the, today the battle question, the Roman one. I was just like, I don't even know where to start with this. Bill's got a fist. Give it to Bill. And that's, you know, you salvage your point. And that's actually what kind of wins you games. I always think just stop stuff going over. And that yeah. will kind of win it for you, ultimately. Um, Yep, so very quickly before we go, I want to say thank you so much to both of you. And my final, final question, I promise this, and this will be quick, <laughs> is what is, what is, so I give you free reign of a quiz to write it. What is your favourite, favourite quiz question you've ever written? Hmm. I, I'm going I'm to cheat and I'm going to say my favourite type of round. Oh, go for it. And I like to ask to do a 50-50 round where I offer two options, which one is older? So people, things, inventions. Oh, nice, oh. yeah, I'd love that. That's my yeah. favourite one. And to have things that are ridiculously close together <laughs> or ridiculously far apart but seem unlike. So, you know, you do the, you know, who was born Who was born first, Marilyn Monroe or the Queen? They were born in the same year. Same year, yeah. yeah. So, you know, you have that kind of thing and then people argue over it and everyone goes, <laughs> oh, definitely... <laughs> Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Have we I've, ever I've, seen I've... Marilyn Monroe and the Queen in the same room? No. I like when you're when you're giving, especially if you're giving quizzes not for hardcore quizzers, mm. things like that that are discussion points where you've got a reasonable chance of getting the answer right. I, I think I love setting them because you can you can really play with people <laughs> and toy with them. <laughs> Shinny. Um, so I've got two. So one, my favourite pair was um, writing about Warren Beatty being the brother of Shirley MacLaine and Keith Chegwin being the brother of Janice Long. Mm-hmm. And that was the pair because you're not going to pair Warren Beatty and Keith Chegwin otherwise. And uh, I did a wiki quiz on all Madonna's lovers that I could verify, <laughs> which was great. How many questions did you have? I was, it wasn't that many. It was just trying to verify who was actually like, I could have this as a source. But it was just pictures of, that was pictures of random men. And as it got like further down the list, the men got younger and younger. So it's sort of like at the middle point, you've got, you've got Warren Beatty again, who comes up. <laughs> Um, because he slept with everyone. Um, and then you've got like kind of, yeah, what Madonna kind of went through a lot of men. So I, the, the one that played hardest was at the time, her current boyfriend, who was like 28 years younger than her or something. He just wasn't famous, but people enjoyed that for reasons, just because it was very trashy yeah. and very gossipy. So um, so again, I'd like to say thank you to Shaneen, to Dara for your time. Thank you for joining me to talk about our favourite thing in the world, or at least for me. <laughs> I know I need a life. I need other hobbies. It's fine. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for watching, if you still are, if we haven't bored you away. But thank you so much. And I hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Thank Bye. you, Bye. sure. Thank you, Dan.